So it's 12.35 p.m. Central Time, so I'll, I'll start. Uh, uh, Sharon, thanks for being the moderator uh, in, in this uh, for this uh, session. And uh, hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, happy Wellness Wednesday, I call it. Uh, it's great to be here. My name is Prashant uh, Joshi, uh, and uh, kids have given me a title called Coach P, so I carry that very proudly. Uh, so, uh, and I'd love to uh, see your, your reaction later, but this is, a, this is not just a talk, just to kind of give you a little perspective before we start. This is an experiential session as well, because talk is cheap, practice is hard. So we're going to do some practice as well, which is how we uh, basically the theme of this talk is serve, lead, succeed, the open, which means yogic mindful wave. So I'll kind of decipher some of these terminology that we sometimes use and we have forgotten what these words are. Uh, it's all about preventing and reversing burnout, which is a real issue uh, from boardrooms to classrooms to homerooms. So that's the idea here. Again, thanks for coming. Uh, just quickly on this slide in terms of uh, my loyalties, of course, Apache Con is why I'm here. So I'm very grateful to all the Apache um, team here uh, for accepting my uh, presentation, my session. But uh, the, the, the four corners of the slide you see are the loyalties that uh, Gurukul is the institution that we co-founded with my better half, my wife, uh, that my team unit at the bottom you see is is the uh, is my home unit, uh, Manju Veda Ila, uh, who uh, Veda just turned 25, so that's her older daughter. So club here is my better half, Manju. So that's who uh, I am. And again, the two brands on the top are the two we have co-founded. And the one on the left bottom is the one I'm advising as we speak. Sukhi, Sukhi means happy. So our whole theme here is uh, creating happiness uh, in the boardrooms, in the classrooms and the homerooms. All right. So with that, again, I've been in the open source world for a long time. Uh, I was with Sun Microsystems and uh, late, eight, late 90s. So uh, again, I go back there and um, I'm an open source evangelist. So with that, let's get started. Um, I'll be in this presentation mode here. So, so, so first and foremost, a thank you that we don't do enough of this. I hope you agree that we don't say thank you enough. So this is my sincere way of saying thank you to all of you that who have come here, uh, attended, uh, and, and later on any reaction you may have, good, bad, ugly, feel free to share. But this is my thank you in any language that uh, pleases you. So that's my little thank you to start with, all right? Um, also, this is the middle of the day for me. Uh, I'm yet to have my uh, food. Uh, so this is a little humor. Hope you are open to this, some humor. Uh, again, if it's the end of your day or beginning of the day, hope this uh, gets a giggle and chuckle uh, uh, for you. Uh, on the left side is uh, something that actually I do for a living. <laughs> I do uh, tell people to simplify their lives, uh, breathe better, and, and of course, <laughs> drink water. So as you can see that we have forgotten the simple things of life and we call ourselves a very successful species. So that's a little humor on the left. On the right is the open source community. Hope you see yourself there as overworked. Uh, really, you have a purpose with which you are in this open source. Community. So you're all Santas here, but in the process, you do exhaust yourself. Over exhaustion is uh, actually one of the uh, <laughs> prime things about burnout. And on the right here is a nurse that, again, let's give a shout out to the frontliners who are fighting this COVID as we speak. So uh, again, there's a little sense of humor, but there's some seriousness behind it as well. So, so with that, uh, let's now get to the agenda. Uh, if I may, this is the 40 minute conversation, uh, about three minutes into it. So we will, as I said, it's an experiential session. So we'll do actually some practice at the beginning uh, so that you have a certain mindset with which we start. And then about 20 minutes of actually a conversation in that we'll consider why, why this is an important topic in this open source community, uh, as well as in general, uh, in your home, in your classrooms, in your uh, conference rooms and boardrooms. And of course, a science, I'm a scientist by training, computer scientist, double e, electric engineer. So we are talking science here. There's no mumbo jumbo, even though it may sometimes seem that way uh, when things are too simple. So, so we'll consider the why and the science. Uh, we'll actually, uh, this is my published work. I'll talk about the leadership attributes uh, called the open uh, slash yogic leadership, uh, which is a published work uh, that you can read up as well. And then, of course, some team building ideas that at the end of the day, we work in teams, whether we are at home, there's a home team, as I mentioned at the, on the beginning slide, uh, at work, there are teams, and whether you're a team leader or just a member of the team, 
uh, these ideas will help you. Uh, will kind of define what team is all about in this open way, so that I hope it opens your minds and uh, helps you towards the self transformation experience. Um, and of course, some key learnings from my own uh, 50 plus years of life and then some takeaways from this presentation. And we'll end with some practice. As I mentioned, practice, practice, practice is really how we get there. So we're going to do some practice at the end and take some Q&A. So that's kind of my division of labor here for this uh, time. Um, and and let's, let's, let's go forward. So <clears throat> before you practice, before we, uh, I just want you to be aware. So right now, if you put it, your hand under your nose, right, left, doesn't matter. And just observe your breathing. Maybe your right nostril is active, maybe your left is active, maybe both. Hope it's not none because that means you're not breathing or you're holding the breath. And when we're angry, we hold the breath. Uh, when you're sometimes, you know, you're just frozen, so to speak. Uh, so just let go. So just observe, you know, no judgment here, just observe, observation, right, left, both and none. Okay. And you, you may enter that in your chat if you'd like, or just keep it with yourself. So now a little disclaimer also that when you do anything with yourself, take care of yourself, uh, use caution. So don't overdo it. Sometimes our ego kicks in saying, oh, I can do better than someone else. You know, we are taught to compete in the process. We forget that we can be our worst enemies. So just listen to your body and the mind when we do some practice. All right. So with that, uh, well, Sharon is our moderator here. Um, so I have a picture of a woman, with, uh, you know, the multitasking, juggling uh, with so many of the uh, tasks that we all can relate to, whether you're a man, woman, or any other gender uh, that you relate to. So this is a universal issue of, of uh, you know, multitasking and too much on our plate. I uh, hope you all agree. So with that, we start with some practice we call ABCs. Now, very simple because we never forget. So what is all about a for aware so right now as we speak just become aware of yourself you could be sitting you could be standing i'm sitting right now but i'll be standing a little later and uh, just become aware of your body there may be some tension somewhere tingling somewhere just become aware no judgment no reaction enjoy that awareness you're scanning the body from toes to your head could be your lower back talking to you could be a neck we overuse our neck these days with the gadgets that we carry. So just become aware of your body, your eyes, your jaw, so much tension we build everywhere. So that's your awareness of the body from toes to your head. Next comes B, B for breathing. Become aware of your breathing. As I mentioned, a hand under your nose, observe the breathing, right, left. You may even observe the breathing at your belly, belly rising and falling with your breath. Just awareness of the breath. Then comes the awareness of the thought. That's the million dollar thing. 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day, folks. We have cluttered with the thoughts and negative thoughts come first. This is science. 80% of our thoughts are negative just by, by nature. And then 95% are repeated. So we live the lives again and again and again, old grudges, old issues. We are never in the present. So ABC is about being in the present, being aware, your body, your breath, your thoughts. Now the magic happens. Take a deep breath. I'll just move to the next slide just to show this is the heart. This heart is very symbolic. So when you take a deep breath, slowly expanding the belly, chest, shoulders, feel energized. You're receiving that beautiful energy and then you're letting go. Exhale completely. The shoulders, chest, belly button going in all the way. Again, slowly breathe in and breathe out. Remember, you are as open source community, you're givers, you're purpose driven. But in the process, you forget to receive. So this time, these 40 minutes, it's time to receive. Enjoy being a receiver. <sighs> you may open your mouth to exhale, but exhale longer. Take your time. No rush. Again, take a deep breath in. <sighs> Just let go, let go, let go. And as we restore the rhythm of our breathing, we are restoring the rhythm of our life. That's your one-on-one of burnout prevention, burnout reversal. Breath is your best friend right under your nose. You feel it and enjoy six liters of your lung capacity. You're using it and slowing down consciously. Heart rate coming down your respiration rate coming down, blood pressure coming down. You're in the present, in a steady state. 
So that's little experiment here of just being here with your body, with your breath, your thoughts, taking some deep breaths and being in the center. Hope that felt good. And now this pause, you're welcome to put something in your chat to say, how did you feel? I work with kiddos a lot. They give spontaneous reaction. Oh, I felt so peaceful, so relaxed. Okay, spontaneous, be spontaneous. Don't analyze too much, we analyze too much. So this is beautiful action we just did. We did practice centering. And then with that, you felt something, the outcome. So again, I'm using the corporate lingo here. There's an input, there's an output, uh, there's an outcome here. But in that, in the process, we did some actions. All right, hope that helped. So that was a little practice at the beginning. Now you say, why do we care, Prashant? Hey, you know, so this is really where I share the problem statement. Okay, you are it. Remember, you are it. You have to be, this is the tag, tag a game that we used to play as kiddos. Okay, you are the person that you need to take care of yourself. This is self-care 101. So what's the problem? Okay, it turns out that we are all a hum emotional animals. Hope you agree. Uh, today's keynote talked about empathy and, and so many other things about uh, team building and words, your language matters. So we are emotional animals. Emotions rule us. And as I uh, shared at the beginning of the practice, you know, negative thoughts come first. So cynicism is kind of so much into us. We are cynical, we are skeptical, which is good from a, you know, again, as a curious being, optimism comes as a second uh, thing, right? Cynicism comes first, optimism comes second. So this is kind of the norm, all right? I'm just stating the, the state of the state. Now, these three emotions, the reason I'm sharing this at the beginning is we have some good news later. So fear, sadness, anger. Hope you agree that they kind of rule us, you know? Anger management, uh, anxiety management. And they become chronic, chronic sadness. We call it depression. And then people take pills and whatnot, some other solutions. But we want comprehensive solutions, permanent solutions. We prevent and reverse these emotions. Again, relatively speaking, right? We are not going to eliminate them, but we're going to reduce their impact on us. So that's kind of the state of the state of who we are as human beings. And this is where the, some data comes in. Okay, illness is expensive. Illness is not. Now, why illness is expensive? It just so happens that this is real, real data, impact on productivity, absenteeism, employee retention, healthcare cost. Okay, I have some US numbers, but they're global numbers too. Um, burnout, okay, burnout is an official uh, diagnosable disease uh, as defined by WHO, World Health Organization. 125 billion to 90, 190 billion dollars in healthcare cost per year. This is a Harvard Business Review data, okay? This is a real number. 500 billion, half a trillion dollars in lost productivity. Oh, I don't feel well. I have a headache. Now I'm, I'll just take a day off. So all of this combined together, employers, okay, and we all are, again, whether you're a startup or you're an established company, these are real uh, dollars that are costing the economy and then, of course, costing your lives uh, in the process. So a big number, okay, uh, to be aware of. This is every year, by the way. And this is even a bigger number. This is $47 trillion. OK, if we don't take care of ourselves, that's the impact of the global economy here uh, in terms of NCDs. Now, NCD is a term uh, to be remembered. It's non-communicable disease. COVID is a communicable disease. But whatever we are sharing here today is applicable to uh, non-communicable disease as well, which is cancer, diabetes, heart disease, respiratory ailments, you know, all of those uh, things that we are plagued by. So uh, tremendous uh, suffering. Uh, economically, uh, personally, professionally, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of the, the grim picture I'm painting initially to say, hey, what do we do about it? So now we say rudeness. Well, rudeness is expensive, civility is not. Again, this is real data that I'm sharing. There's a nice TED talk that you may want to uh, look at as by Christine Porath, uh, talks about why respectful, being respectful to the coworkers is good for business. It's not just a good thing uh, as you're uh, you know, taught in, at home and at school uh, is, hey, be kind, be good. But this is also good for business. Why? Well, Cisco has a real data here. It was costing them $12 million because of rudeness. That means you, you may lose an employee, you may lose a customer, more importantly, that uh, no business is coming if there's no customer. So this is again, real data. Cisco then created a global workplace initiative with which they started dealing with rudeness. So these are all human emotions, remember. Uh, you, we act impulsively, we react, okay? And all this is preventable. 
Okay, so this is kind of the data, and, and this is where I define what burnout really means. And uh, you, you all have seen the Apollo 13 movie, Houston, we have a problem. I live in Austin, by the way, Austin, Texas, and I always say, Austin, we have a solution. So that's what we're going to talk about in the next couple of slides is, is really what's the solution here. But let's define what the problem is, right? It's the chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed. And what happens because of that extreme exhaustion? We are cynical towards our jobs. We can distance ourselves, reduce efficacy. We are there, but we are not there. So I'm sure we all have noticed that in some shape or form, but this is real uh, definition of burnout. So take it seriously. And what are the causes and effects, right? So what, is, what's, what causes burnout? Again, there's a chicken and egg problem, but it all comes back to leadership as I'll paint a picture here, okay? Lack of control and power at work, okay? Boredom or chaos, problem in social life, heavy workloads, right? Plate is always full. We never say how to do, say no. But then what are the real uh, you know, symptoms here? What are, what are the signs? Uh, and then you see the list here. We all can relate to some of that uh, at one point or the other. Even today, for that matter, you may have had, you know, uh, just before this, uh, uh, I, as a speaker, I had some anxiety. So I took some deep breaths. Okay, so I'm kind of practicing what I'm sharing here. Anyway, so this is kind of the cause and effect picture. Now let's get to the, the good news here, okay? The good news is there's a science here at, at work. Okay, so what am I uh, what am I saying? What's the equation at the uh, upfront? Is higher emotional intelligence? Okay, there's higher resilience. So we all need to be emotionally intelligent. You're you're all brilliant as open source, uh, you know, community. Uh, you do amazing stuff. There's a lot of IQ here. Uh, sometimes the EQ is compromised in the process. Okay, so I'm, what I'm saying here is let's focus on the emotional intelligence while you all are. Uh, awesomely intelligent. So what is this all about? Neuroplasticity. It's not a new phrase. It was uh, kind of uh, started uh, someone by the name of Don Hebb started using in 1949. And he, he had a famous line there called neurons are fired together, wired together. Okay. So this is reversible. If I'm an angry person, I can become a peaceful person. <laughs> oh, vice versa. If I'm at peace, yeah, I can become an angry person too. That's why we need to practice the right things at the right time. So this is how our brain works. You know, there's so much of a talk, think of a thinking brain, the rational brain, the right, left, but then there's the limbic brain, the emotional brain. And that's what we need to focus on here so that how do we really address that? And then there's a reptilian brain, which is a fight or flight. Uh, and if you're in that mode all the time, you're in that stressed out mode, the chronic stress, the chronic burnout, okay? So we want to be, uh, caring of our limbic brain. That's kind of the, the punchline here out of that. Uh, so what are we saying here? Again, emotional intelligence, that term came in 1990s. It existed forever, of course. And what are the components of emotional intelligence, right? Self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, social skills. So these are the kind of components of social uh, emotional intelligence, as you can see, why they're important now, so that you prevent and reverse burnout. Okay, so you've got to be aware, as we said, we let be, become aware of your body, that pain in your back, back pain, lower back pain. Become aware, and then we're going to solve it. Okay, regulation, motivation, empathy that uh, uh, Camille mentioned in the, in the morning at the keynote about empathy. And then I also go further to say compassion over empathy, uh, which means you're actually taking some action. All right. Now, yoga, you, know, you must have heard of yoga a lot or you're practicing it already, but this is our own little acronym here for you. It's your own great asset. You know, body is an asset, sometimes becomes a liability. Mind is an asset, becomes a liability. So we say, hey, yoga is your own great asset. Take care of it. And what's the definition? Again, as a scientist, I like to define. So this is the definition by Patanjali, who's a scientist behind us, uh, the Einstein of yoga, if I may call it. And, and this is a simplified definition. It says calming the vibrations of the mind is yoga. So that's what yoga is all about, is being, you know, calming. <sighs> Take a deep breath, slow down. All that clutter, 60 to 80,000 thoughts, let's slow down. So we have clarity with which we act, and then a, hopefully a compassionate action. So it's a great tool for self-management to self-transformation. So this is kind of the, the, and then the word mindfulness. Sometimes people don't use it separately. Or this yoga, or which people think of bending yourself like a pretzel. There's mindfulness. So what is mindfulness? It's a quality of being in the present, fully engaged with whatever you're doing without judgment or reaction. So when we take a pause, you're mindful of your body, your breath, your thoughts. But now you go next step. So that's why I call it yoga as a superset of mindfulness. It's not, there's no compartments here. It is the same terms, just used differently. So Buddha kind of, uh, you know, uh, 
perfected that art of, of being mindful. Uh, then John Cabot Zinn in uh, U.S. Uh, Mass General kind of made, brought it into mainstream. So now yoga and mindfulness all in the mainstream. So that's what I'm saying. Let's become mindful, and I tie this to, to openness. Some inspiration for you here. Hope that helps this inspiration. And there's, a, there's also a TED talk by Simon Sinek. Whether you like him or not, it's, it's a really good uh, thing about why we heard today this morning. So, so the why matters, okay? So why are we here? Why do you do what you do? Okay, and there's a biology again that talks, that's why this brain matters, your limbic brain, the emotional brain, that why. But see these leaders, what are they talking about, right? These are uh, fathers of their own nations, Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Gandhi's birthday is coming up October 2nd. Uh, and then what are they saying? They're basically saying, give the credit away, take the blame. So you need a lot of courage. You need to be bold to do something. Okay, really out of the box. And that's what, uh, so uh, just some inspiration for you with which I weave the next uh, slide, which is the attributes of yogic leadership. And I call this open leadership, okay? And this is my published work and you can look it up uh, later. So what am I saying here? Again, a five-year-old can spell leader, L-E-A-D-E-R, or a, if you're in the boardroom, yeah, all the leaders, you know, so much of talk of leadership, there's this uh, big, you know, trillions of dollars are spent on leadership training, but we forget the simplicity of it. And that's what we are all about is developing leaders means in the first place. Take a deep breath and let go. When crisis comes, sometimes people say, oh, he's such a great leader. He was so bashful. So, you know, like a bully. And that is not sustainable leadership. So what we're saying is be level headed to be a sustainable leader, a open leader. OK, efficient. Yeah, be in the present. I've been given 40 minutes for this talk. If I overuse my time, I'm not being efficient. I may have to be cautious here of that uh, as well here. Okay, so efficiency about being in the present. So I'm not wavering uh, from past to the future, being anxious or lamenting, just being in the present. Aware, be open. As we said, be aware of your breath. Be aware of your thoughts. As, as uh, I think Kim mentioned this morning, be aware of your words. The choice of your words, okay? So that awareness, daring, be bold. Don't be an appeaser. I mean, that doesn't get you anywhere. If you're burnt out and then you're still doing something because you're afraid of saying something to your boss, then you're not being a good leader in yourself, whether you're an individual contributor or as a team leader. So be daring, okay? Exemplary. That's very simple, but it's very important. Uh, do what you say. So lead by example is what we say. And then the punchline becomes righteous. You know, do the right thing. Right, we say it, but we don't always do it. All right. So, so with that said, so let's uh, uh, now, you know, how do you implement it? Right. Okay. So these are the attributes of leadership. It's published. It's uh, all there. Uh, I've given enough uh, presentations on this. So, how does this really? How do you implement this? Right. And I have some numbers that uh, it's in the backup slide. But uh, let's talk about the team then. Now, you're part of a team. See if this relates to you. Better be a, a trusted person here on the team or your leader be a trusted person, empathetic, accountable, motivated. Otherwise, you don't feel you want to do something today, right? So if you're not motivated, you will not get out of the bed. So again, being a successful team really means you're, it's a trusted team, a trusted leader, empathetic, accountable, motivated. And with that becomes leadership becomes successful. So teams are at the root of uh, you know, leadership being successful. Uh, if I'm the CEO, I won't be successful unless my team is successful. Or if you're an individual contributor, yeah, you can be that bottleneck between success and failure. So, so then um, there's some ideas here again of, of uh, team building and wellness. Uh, and this is the phrase that's not mine, but see if that resonates with you. That illness starts with I. Too much of I uh, can create a lot of <laughs> headaches for yourself and others. And wellness starts with we. So, it's so a lot of we here. Okay, so some ideas here of, of uh, wellness, of mon mindful Monday meals. Uh, Monday, we all dread Mondays, do we? Uh, or don't we? Uh, so hopefully this will, uh, you know, give you some perspective on how to uh, deal with Mondays with uh, something mindful, even virtually, by the way. Okay, yeah. So uh, wellness one day, uh, Wednesday walks. Today's a Wednesday. I call it a wellness Wednesday. Yeah, so go for a quiet walk, mindful walk. So beautiful activities so that we are really decluttering ourselves so we have clarity and we also uh, become well in the process the blood pressure the diabetes these are all real issues that we can solve with the simplicity of this and then this is passionate camaraderie okay yeah, sometimes you may be very effective as a team member because you're great at uh, your uh, domain uh, skill but uh, you may be a mess on the emotional side. So how do we become those compassionate, uh, you know, uh, team uh, 
builders and and so be the camaraderie so i have some ideas i've done this in a, a conference and setting in a i was in china for a open source unconference uh, in november and i did something like that as well there so so you could be anywhere and you could be doing this virtually or physically so there's some ideas here all right so uh i'm just going to uh, take a pause here how are we doing uh hopefully people are attending and uh okay so so let me just get back here um so these are some key learnings i'm just going to um, may not read everything out of it here but you see so this is about my 50 plus years of life that i'm sharing here okay so we are so much focused on destination we forget the actual journey itself so enjoy the journey okay good bad ugly just have the perspective that there's a reason why this is ugly right now it will become good later positivity there soft is strong is very important right we have to be in that mode of softness is a beautiful thing uh, being brash, being a bully is people think, oh, that's a great leader. And, and uh, we say hard nosed, soft spoken. So your choice. But over the time, you'll notice soft spoken is where actually you win, uh, so to speak. Okay. Allies, very important. Uh, okay. At all levels. Uh, and then, of course, have passion and compassion, not just passion, you can become dry. And then uh, this is the punchline is be selfish to be selfless, meaning take care of yourself. So you can do a lot of giving work in the open source world. Uh, you're doing something altruistic, but uh, first take care of yourself also in the process, right? So, so that's the key learnings. And then finally, the, the, the takeaways here, uh, uh, let me just kind of build those out here. So hope what we saw here in the last 25, uh, 30 minutes of the conversation is burnout is, is a real thing. So take it seriously. Uh, it's preventable, it's reversible. So uh, make sure that we, we take care of it that way. And then, um, uh, you know, the definitions matter, right? So yoga, your own great asset, calming the vibrations of mind, mindfulness, all these become a great toolkit here for self care. So, so that's kind of the idea here. And then I hope you saw in those leadership attributes, the, the yogic leadership is being open, being aware, uh, being exemplary, being efficient, uh, being level-headed and all that. And all that uh, you know, builds that emotional intelligence and with that builds your higher resilience so that you can recover, right? Getting into a trouble is one thing, but recovering from it, that's up to you. And again, uh, with the support system uh, and with your own practice, you will actually, um, um, come out of it uh, clean and even better. And then uh, I say my <laughs> final takeaway here is practice makes perfect, but then I change it to optimal. So if you're becoming a perfectionist all the time, you'll have a frown on your face more than a smile. <laughs> and I'm a stickler for smiling versus being frowned, uh, you know, so grumpy face. And that's why we're gonna do some practice right now uh, to, to get to an optimal efficiency of we as human beings, all right? So with that said, Let's, let's do some practice, all right? So I'm gonna build this slide out and then I'm gonna go into the screen where uh, I may even ask Sharon to show herself if that's okay with her and we shall do some practice. All right, so, so far so good folks. So here, if I may, if I may I'm just gonna get up a little bit, if you don't mind, uh, get this uh, thing out. Hey Sharon, all right, thank you, for, thank you for being a good sport. All right, so as you can see, I'm standing for a conscious reason because we sit for too long and then we get into trouble. You know, we are back hurts, this hurts. So right now, just shake, 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 wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <sighs> just open up. So I'm... Move the body, okay? We all have 206 bones in our bodies, 350 plus joints, 650 plus muscle groups. So aim, open up, open up. Again, we are an open source. <laughs> and breath is still open. Breath is still open, by the way, it's open. Okay, it's free, so enjoy it. Ah, give us a little pat on the back, pat on the back. Thanks for coming. Say hello from the other side. Hello, hello, hello. Again, don't overdo it, remember. No competition here, but your lymphatic drain, okay? You wanna cleanse. The other side, pat on the back. How's it cooperating? Remember, disuse happens, misuse happens, overuse happens. And now give us a nice big hug, a nice big hug. And I ask a trick question. Hey, Sharon, who's your best friend? The <laughs> <laughs> oh, No, no, that, that, that's, very, that's very kind of you. But the idea of giving a self-huggy, this is, I call it a self-huggy, is you are your best friend, my friend. You are your best friend. So, you, so the whole idea is take care of yourself, okay? That's the, that's the graphic there. 
that I, I was sharing there. Let me just uh, maximize that if that helps. So, so remember, so move the body, steady the mind, okay? You are your best friend. And the next thing comes as, okay, so, so I have a new, new, uh, new little, uh, okay, we all have this gadget. You know, I call this a drug. We all are drug lords using this mobile for too long, okay? And with this mobile, we are like this all the time. And our cervical vertebrae are being impacted, okay? So what I say here is keep the mobile away. That's called knee mobile asan, okay? Mobile asan, and I say knee mobile asan. So what I mean, mean by that, okay? So we are in this mode. Now I say open up, take a deep breath. Ah, oh, I'm free. See, so we have to do this a lot, okay? We're do, doing this a lot. We're becoming like this, okay? Open up. Cervical vertebrae working for you. Take a deep breath in. Ah. All right. Hope that feels good. Again, this is a heart opener. Sadness is impacting your heart. So open up. So this is also a heart opener, a lung opener. This is the real solution here, a simple solution. During the day, get up and then open up. Get get this drug out of the way, okay? So that's my little uh, punchline here. And, and, and the final thing here, Sharon, you're such a great, uh, you're such a great laughter, okay? So you're already laughing before I ask you to. So folks, be, be good, be good sports right now, okay? So take a deep breath in, and you're on Broadway, burst out into laughter. <laughs> So the punchline here is, the punchline is exhalation equals relaxation. You see that? Exhalation equals relaxation. So the laughter is still the best medicine for a reason. As we exhale, we empty out the lung, or stale air. You feel energized, recharged. So make sure you're getting enough laughter every day. It's that says, we get just laugh about four times a day. And the children <laughs> laugh about four, we the, and the children laugh about 400 times a day. So wow. what's wrong with that picture? <laughs> Yeah, so so that is the idea here that folks, uh, you know, take care of yourself. Uh, so laugh. I'm just going to go back to sitting if that's okay, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll end here with little silence. Okay, so that's the idea, folks. Uh, hope hope that uh, helps you a little uh, practice component of it, and then we'll we'll end here, okay, with some silence if that's okay with you. So now, as as we saw in this presentation so far, right? Practice, practice, practice. Talk is cheap. Practice is hard. So let's get back to some silence. De decluttering ourselves. Time to heal, to receive. You're all givers. We forget to receive. So enjoy receiving with gratitude. Again, this is science. When you give yourself five minutes out of the day, it's a great ROI you get. Okay. So five minutes gives you 23 hours and 55 minutes of quality of the day. So chronic burnout, let's get rid of it. Chronic fatigue, chronic exhaustion. So recharge yourself moment to moment on a daily basis. So next one minute, a little bit of silence. I'll, I'll have a little singing bowl here with me and then Enjoy the sound. Just enjoy. <clears throat> All right, that was a little uh, practice here. So now, since we just did the practice, again, observe your breathing. Whether it's your right, your left, your both. The idea again is, if you're from anxiety mode, you go into a calmer mode. So this is real uh, empirical evidence that you can have. And with that, I will take a pause. I thank you, will answer any questions and hope for. All right. 
Any questions? Are we good on time, Sharon? Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah. Um, so if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to uh, enter them in the chat. Sorry. So thanks very much, Prashant. For, this is the first time I've sort of been been involved in this of sort of mindfulness session at uh, at ApacheCon. So I think it's just, it's great actually because there's so many people that are you know work, doing a lot of work. I mean, in the like you say in the open source, doing a lot of work and not really thinking about health and uh, and the effect that uh, the amount of work has on them. So yeah. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, well, thank you for, uh, you know, even people are saying right, left, uh, very nice. Uh, so thank you, Isaac and, and uh, Mahindran uh, again. So this is real, folks. This is, you know, uh, uh, let's uh, prevent the suffering. Let's avoid the suffering. Let's reverse the suffering in a simplified, you know, economical way uh, so that we don't have expensive solutions. I mean, you're all innovators. So what we did today was some innovation. Uh, in this uh, and true open source is in your breath is your open source use it <laughs> wisely so that's the idea again thank you it's 110 my time so that's 30 uh, i guess uh, uh, is that well i still have five more minutes looks like is it so yeah, yeah, yes, you do. Time. yes you do so um yeah, you do I'm here. yeah yeah so if, if people do have any questions please feel free to write them in the in in the chat um i'm, I'm gonna have to uh drop off because i just need to uh, just check yeah. for the the, the the following session which sure. is a few minutes but once again thank you very very much for the for the session and uh, that was great and and um I'll, I'll, uh, I've always already tweeted about it on our uh, Apache community uh, account. So, um, and it's great that these are being recorded, so people can people who who did miss them can actually sort of watch them a little bit later. So, thanks again, and I hope to see you awesome. in, a, in, in the future at an Apache Con. <laughs> okay, take yes, care. Yes, I will. And th thank thank you for being a moderator. Take care. Take care. I'm still around for the next yeah few minutes, so okay. feel free, folks, uh, to ask any questions. So you have my contact information. Uh, you're welcome to. Call me later as well for anything offline. But uh, yeah, it was uh, a joy being here uh, at the Apache Con at home. And uh, many friends to thank here uh, for allowing me to do this. And uh, uh, all right. Um, again, I'm here uh, for the next three minutes at least. And then we'll uh, leave this uh, platform. And then I'll be available in the hallways and other places to answer any questions. <clears throat> what kind of breaks do you like to employ during the day? I feel that they are more necessary now with work from home, especially. So Raymond, first of all, thank you for your question. So uh, simple as that, one is we got to get some fresh air every day all right so if you're sitting uh, for too long in front of the computer every 20 minutes do get up uh, if you have the ability to go out and get some fresh air uh, do walk bare feet again this is a very important bare feet walk on the grass okay or get some sunshine uh, very important make sure you're hydrating yourself so take some water breaks so so simple and then stretches also if you're sitting you're know, bending forward today was not the time to do some more uh, um, comprehensive practice, but there are practices to bend forward, bend backwards, uh, breathe, open up, uh, and then of course go down. So you sit without a gadget, uh, you know, no glasses, no nothing. Just close your eyes and enjoy the darkness. So many, many ways you take and take breaks um, to just uh, you know, so that <laughs> you're not burnt out. Thank you for the question. Hope that helps. <clears throat> All right, awesome. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, so folks, so the idea again is that this is uh, real. This is uh, we are doing this with doctors, by the way, uh, and and uh, you know, boardrooms, so that uh, there's less of a burnout there. And as you know, doctors have a very tough li uh, tough life right now with uh, COVID uh, in particular and uh, wearing the mask all the time. And there's so much happening. So I have created some audio recordings for them. So it's just bite size, two minutes, three minutes, and there's many, many ways we can uh, prevent uh, and reverse uh, these issues so you can sleep better. And that's another thing, right? The sleep is, uh, we are all a sleep deprived society. So this, and then it impacts our day to day life. 
uh, you can become a better <laughs> a grumpy boss and that that doesn't help the ecosystem there so it it's really comes back to no matter what role you play as an individual contributor or a team leader uh, this is for you and that's why I take it seriously and practice 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 so again i thank you for your time it's uh, 114 my time so i think we may have to leave the room in in a minute but uh, i really appreciate you uh, joining here and uh, uh, attending this session so <clears throat> Yeah, the alternate is during the day. That is true. Uh, but again, the good news is we can make it voluntary, Daniel, uh, to to make our breathing, uh, you know, where we want to be. So in a calm state or an active state. So that's the beauty that is voluntary. You can have a voluntary control over your breathing. And that's the crux of this whole uh, yoga mindfulness uh, session. All right, folks, uh, again, I really appreciate your time. I think we'll have to leave uh, right now as uh, maybe some other session is to come, but uh, really appreciate uh, your time and your uh, being here. Thank you. Have a great day ahead and have a great, uh, have a great rest of the conference. Take care. Bye. <clears throat>